Hey folks, JP here. It's Friday, March 11th, and uh, we're going to remove some honeybees out of a wall section in a, in a garage. And um, my customer tells me that these bees have been here probably before Hurricane Katrina, and uh, he's pretty sure there was a tree on the far end of the lot that uh, had bees in that tree and uh, likely threw off a swarm is what he's thinking and uh, entered this this, uh, this wall. So we're going to go ahead and open it up in a little bit and uh, give them a new home. Masonite, uh, it absorbs moisture. It's, it's kind of like a heavy duty uh, cardboard material. So we got a bunch of holes here and the bees have propolized these holes, okay? Now I can see comb all the way to where my hand is and uh, I see comb here. So these, these bees have had to do a lot to keep the elements out, okay? So um, you see we have a window here. We're going to have our window sill. So there's a possibility that they could have gone up e either side of the, the window. I'm thinking that it's probably contained in this area, but we won't know until we open it up. So we're about to get into it. Hope you all enjoy the video. I mean, I can cut this if you want mm -hmm. on that stud. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to, I don't know. It's going to be replaced. I mean, I don't. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. See, this is on the stud, so. I know I'm going to replace it. Oh. You got comb. I don't know if you have any here, but I'm seeing it here. So I'm thinking we need to, you got a stud over here, so we need to get on on this side of it so it makes sense to cut on that stud. Yeah, good. So I'm just going to pull. I may go get me a, I may get some of the T111. Put that up there. Yep. Propolis right here. They make this from tree sap and certain flowers. See that right there? We also call it bee glue. We're making a little progress here. Trying to get to it. Let me just show you all a few little close ups. So, solid propolis right here. Okay, that's solid propolis. Looks like there was a hive in this wall section here at one time. Okay, there's an old comb. And, um,. See propolis right up underneath the window. All right, there's our bees, and they're pretty much chilling. There's not a lot going on here, so these might be a candidate for a nuke. Get that out of there. Good. How do you get that honey out of there? For yourself. I mean, it's granulated a little bit because it's gone for at least one winter. If you try to, sometimes you could squeeze it through like a strainer and then bottle it. But if you if you try to do that with this and you bottled it, it'd probably granulate on you within a couple of days. So it's really best to just cut little chunks of this out and eat it, chew it just like that. Get the honey out of the, the beeswax and then then it'll be like the consistency of spent gum. All right. And you won't want to swallow it. You could if you wanted to, it won't hurt you, but it's like chewing on a candle <laughs> at that point. You want to try it? <laughs> try that in. I'll bit up that in. I don't have no germs, man. What's it doing? <laughs> bite that? Yeah. You take a bite. You ever seen cut comb honey? Where they have the jaw with the comb in it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, somewhere. So that's 
a lot of people like to buy that type of honey so they can take that comb out and chew on it like that. <laughs> Pure honey. Yep. That's the good stuff. There, nothing's been done to it. Sometimes in the big groceries, you know, the honey's been heated and blended with all kinds of other types of honey. From, I mean, some of those labels have, you know, product in you know six different countries. I mean, you don't know what you get. Some of it's pretty awful too. You can't beat this stuff here. Honey right out of a hive, raw, fresh honey. Just can't beat that. A friend of my granddaughter come in from uh, Romania. And her daddy does the bees, the bees hives. Uh -huh. And two months after a year, he goes up in the mountains. He spends two months in the mountains because they got certain trees, some, some kind yeah. of tree up there uh -huh. that, that makes, it's supposed to make extremely good honey. So he spends two months out the year up in that mountain. They may get a little bit agitated right now, okay? I'm going to try to pull that piece off. I don't want to get it done. I'm trying to avoid it. <laughs> what do you do? You bottle this stuff up and you sell it or what? I, I mean, I have a list of people, you know, and I sell it too, but I don't keep up with the demand because I'm so busy removing bees. Yeah? So what do you do with the bees if you don't sell I mean, if you don't sell the honey? Well, I have different bee yards. And I set people up with bees too. Help them with beekeeping. I mean, I manage my bees, and I, I, I leave more honey on in the winter time than some folks. That helps them survive. So, you know, a big part of it for me is just saving the bees. I know it sounds a little corny, but yeah, and they're they're important, you know. And uh, most they're very interesting insect. I always call them God's favorite little insect. They have to be. And they just have their own little social world and they work together and I think it's just cool as can be. It's amazing how something can work that close together yeah. and, and live. Of course they they pollinate a lot of food we eat, so they help us out. See this is what I was talking about, the brood nest, see, see up in here? Mm -hmm. These are that's worker uh, cell. That's females. Uh, if I see any drone brood, I'll show you what that looks like. The drones are the males. But I don't see any yet. It could be down here though. This time of the year you should have some drone brood. See, so they made all this honey. And um, that's, that's set up to survive. These are good survivors. Obviously. I mean, they're in a small area. They have to get pretty congested. Like I said, they probably swarm every year multiple times. They have to. Every they time they swarm, what they do? Yeah. They start somewhere else, and whatever's left here starts up again. <laughs> oh, it's funny, huh? Okay. This is all capped honey. Is that any good? Music? Yeah. I mean, some people really like that old dog honey like that. They think it's just terrific. And uh, I think it tastes pretty good myself. You like it? Yeah, pretty good. And how the hell are you going to get tails out of there without getting stung? Or are they going to just... Slowly, methodically, and carefully? <laughs> <laughs> The most intrusive part, though, is, is right now. Once I get all that exposed, I'll take a little, little break, give them a few minutes, and then they usually settle down. And it's hard to believe. I'm surprised they ain't going Usually. crazy. I guess that smoke must be. The smoke helps. It's a powerful tool. I don't fool with bees without it. Unless it's a swarm. A swarm is just bees, and they don't really have anything to defend. So they, they usually humble. You'll see more bees come up and, and cover all that. So that one's done me right there. But I got the stinger out quick. See the stinger? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. See, watch what happens when I let this bee go. I'm going to try to keep stinging. <laughs> they usually go. Right between the eyes. I don't blame them, though. Right, this is a queen cell right here. I don't know if it, anything's in it. See, they can they can draw this out and make a new queen. Oh, really? With that cell right there. See how it, it's different? Uh huh. Got a peanut shape. Yeah, it's a queen in there. But it, it could be a larva that they're feeding to become a queen. But I'll know in a minute.